Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to Edwards, weekly Edwards Insider, the 25th. We deliver the news about the creation of our project Edwards. And as usual, Tokugawa-san, could you please start the session? Thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. This is Hiro Tokugawa speaking. Um, now, uh, for the next couple of uh, times, I would like to talk about uh, culinary culture in Edo, or uh, Edo food. And uh, the most typically Edo uh, is probably soba. Especially, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, worldwide it may be sushi, but uh, for Japanese, sushi is luxury. And while uh, soba, you can eat on the platform of many stations, you know, so it's much, much more ordinary uh, bread and butter kind of stuff. Now, uh, soba is actually the name of a plant. And in English, it's buckwheat. So it doesn't sound very appetizing. And uh, and actually, its main uh, value was in its uh, robustness. So in, in regardless of the weather, it takes only 75 days to mature. It will grow. And uh, so uh, whenever there is a famine or a very poor harvest of rice, uh, the government would recommend the people to uh, raise soba instead. And uh, this was the case since the uh, ancient imperial government, Mitsuryo Kokka. Uh, and then, uh, and then, how you ate it? <laughs> I, I think this is something you fed uh, your livestock, but uh, people ate them too. And how you ate it is uh, well. First, you cooked it, mixed it with rice, so it was a kind of a substitute. And then people start to uh, grind it and grind it into powder, and uh, well, uh, cooked it into something that is like mochi or. Well, not mochi, it's not so sticky, but you made dumplings out of them. Uh, this is sobagaki. And then uh, they were bur they were grilling it and so on. So, so it was like a very sad version of bread until Tokugawa times. And then in the early 17th century, and this is very important. This is the most typically Japanese dish, but it was a Korean priest uh, who came as a messenger to the shogun uh, who ate soba in Nara. And he found it so unattractive that he advised the, the uh, cooks to mix it with wheat flour. And that way it becomes more sticky, you know? So from there, uh, now you can, and, and also probably the noodle form uh, was it, uh, his advice as well, as udon is much thicker while uh, nemmyeon, the cold noodle in Korea, is much thinner, so uh, it probably takes after that. And from there, uh, soba took its noodle form. You see, and uh, and and then in Edo, it became very popular. And also at the same time, uh, there was soba delivery all over the place. You see, it was a very simple, only one kind of soup, uh, one bowl of soba, uh, walking around in the night. And then, uh, but there are so many of them, and since they were walking around with a small uh, grill as well, so, so, so they were carrying fire. So it, was, it became the cause of many fires in Edo City. So this form was banned many times. And then eventually they became uh, fixed uh, establishments. And, um, and then more and more things got on. So basically the uh, menu for a soba restaurant uh, in today's Japan was uh, established 200 years ago. All the dishes you would see now uh, were there in a standard soba shop, and uh, now and it is also a uh, custom of the Japanese to eat soba on New Year's Eve. It's called Toshikoshi soba, and uh, we uh, eat it as we hear the tem Buddhist temples bells are ringing. Uh, well, not bells, but the gongs, <laughs> gonging. And the idea is that uh, you the soba is very long. It's, it's like spaghetti. So, uh, and you keep eating the soba while the year ends and the new year arrives. And the soba itself uh, represents continuity of time in your life. Uh, so uh, the sound of eating soba is uh, tsuru tsuru, and uh, you bite it. So it's tsuru, uh, which is a crane, and which is supposed to live a thousand years. And kame, ka, to kamu, uh, is, becomes kame, which is a turtle, which is supposed to live 10,000 years. So uh, it represented longevity. Uh, this is just a myth, okay? It was a bit more metaphysical, okay? So that would be enough for today. And thank you very much, Oksana. Uh, thank you very much, Tokuro-san, for the delicious talk. Finally, <laughs> we have something very interesting. Actually, in Ukraine, we eat buckwheat a lot. Mm, yes. 
Yes, and uh, I really like uh, this dish. Like, sweet. Mm. Interesting. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, next again, could you please uh, continue? Thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, I assume you might know uh, who was the ambassador already uh, because this, uh, you know, uh, this radio is going to be uh, tomorrow, right? So uh, on Tuesday. So uh, I guess maybe you must be surprised to see and hear who was it. And then uh, today we are going to have a uh, monthly eight of us uh, insider uh, from 630 JST. And then all of the key team now coming to Korea to attend some conference. And then it's been so long since I attend some, you know, this type of event because of the COVID-19. And then it's, I, I think it's been more than two years and a half, I guess. And then, and, you know, we can feel the energy, the energy of this conference, you know, like, like blockchain event is like, like this. Yeah. And then anyone loves blockchain, anyone loves crypto, anyone loves you know, freedom and anyone loves liberty. It's like a kind of new religious, like, um, yeah, interesting anyway, interesting. And then uh, it, it's just a beginning for us to uh, expand our global marketing from Korea. Uh, unfortunately, we ha we didn't have enough time to, you know, uh, open a booth or, you know, a kind of, you know, keynote or something like that. But I think uh, in September, October, November, we are gonna attend some event in Dubai, Singapore, Malaysia as well, and then uh, London, so that we our activity is going to be known by any of the people who might be interested in Edubus. And then the thing is, it's quite easy for us to give some presentation about Edubus because anyone knows Samurai Ninja. That's all. You know Samurai Ninja, right? They came back to our space. That's all. Five seconds to give you know, this short presentation, that's super helpful for us. So we definitely believe that our activity, I mean, our PL activity is gonna be uh, you know, paying, uh, paying attention to all of the people. And then many of the people are interested, are, are gonna be interested in our activity. And then in terms of Gamify, uh, we you know, often have a meeting on Tuesday night with of course, Tokao-san, Dominic and me, and uh, studio, I mean, Sequin in US, and we discuss uh, details of this gaming, like principles, manners, and the function wise, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, we, we, we are close to uh, grab the timeline and the cost wise for a part, uh, you know, uh, for a whole year. So that I, once this, you know, gaming application is gonna be launched, then this screen, I mean, gaming screen, and gaming experience is gonna be also provided at, at the conference event, I guess. Because I've seen some screens like uh, which shows, you know, kind of new new types of metaverse, new types of gamify, new types of uh, something visualized. But definitely I can say our adverse teaser is gonna be much more better and much more beautiful and much more high visual than all of other, you know, uh, creatives. So we'd like to show our activities and works at the conference. Anyway, we are super excited to be here. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ken. Yes, I'm also ex very excited about all our, our future participation yeah. in this world events. Yes. With you, with you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> really, I really would thank you. Really thank you, of course. <laughs> yes, thank you. So Mitsubishi, could you please participate in our talk? Okay, uh, hello. We're in uh, Korean Blockchain Week, as Jensen explained. So I visited uh, all the booths in the venue and I analyzed the structure of booths and how each project presented or framed uh, their uh, new projects. And I got some insight, I got some idea. Then as Jensen said, uh, we should put on emphasis on our visual and high quality design of metaverse space. Uh, that's the most critical differentiator other projects seem to uh, have many written words on their signboard, on their booth. But I think it's better for us to present the visual quality of uh, Edwards itself. And that's much more convincing and persuasive rather than uh, trying to explain with words. That's my uh, impression and basic strategy for uh, presenting a booth 
So maybe we will attend future events in Dubai, Singapore, London, but I think our consistent strategy will be to put emphasis on high quality visuals. So for example, we will have a large monitor screen and the trailer or teasers will be repeated in the large monitor. That's far more convincing rather than having a lot of like pamphlets and leaflets and words. That's uh, what I got in this uh, event because there are, there are a lot of metaverse projects, obviously, but I don't think uh, they have sort of a, a strong differentiator. Like it looks like a usual metaverse project, but what we, what we have is really unique and very exclusive. So that's how we sort of, how we should uh, differentiate our project from other existing metaverse projects. That's one thing. And secondly, uh, today we will have a monthly Adverse Insider uh, at night, and we will announce a, a several important things. One of which is uh, to have an, to welcome an ambassador. Again, and is making an arrangement for that ambassador to join monthly Adverse Insider. I think that will that announcement will have a very huge impact over uh, you know not only Japanese audience but also global audience. So I think this is a great opportunity for us to expand our marketing approach to a even wider range of audience. I I already you know. Uh, you know, looked at uh, many positive comments in Twitter about, you know, uh, expectation and ambassador. A lot of people are waiting for and excited about new ambassador and special guests who will join today's monthly Adverse Insider. I think that's wonderful, uh, you know, uh, expectation and reaction that people have already in our community. And moreover, uh, this time in Korean Blockchain Week, uh, Adverse doesn't have a booth, but for next from the next event, we will have more uh, active participation. Maybe we'll have a booth, maybe we'll have, let's say a discussion or we will attend a panel discussion or maybe somebody will uh, speak in front of the audience. We will have that kind of chance. So I think um, attending Korean Blockchain Week is the great uh, preparing opportunity for us to consider how we should strategically expand our marketing approach to a global market. Uh, we met a lot of people uh, a lot of like people to talk about like potential partnership and collaboration. You know, a lot of people introduce somebody new uh, for us and so, so that we can sort of expand our network, social network. I think that's very important in a global blockchain community as well. I, I, I already met several people that I already knew, but those people introduce new people to me and that's great opportunities. And I introduced Ediverse projects to many people in the uh, blockchain community that I met in here in this event. Uh, so I, and now I'm creating or editing a sort of short documentary video of this uh, business trip. I'd like to show that uh, maybe tonight at earliest time, but, uh, you know, this week, maybe I can publicize it in the uh, Edelweiss official YouTube channel. So stay tuned. Thank you. That's all from me. Thank you very much, Mitsushi. And uh, next, Dominique, could you please uh, sum up our today's session? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, Oksana. That uh, um, as everybody mentioned, that um, we are now in Korea. That uh, um, we started global marketing, and and then yeah, probably I think that Oksana must be a representative of Ukraine. Yes, in the future. Yeah. So um, this global marketing that we need a, 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 a we need a representative. Uh, persons or maybe office or maybe place uh, in uh, world uh, worldwide actually the other nations probably and then I hope that everybody's just coming into uh, Edwards in the future. So um, our global marketing things um, so far uh, just we started um, and in September that that we're going to Dubai that that that's going to be a very big uh, event for us because we're going to have a booth and then. Uh, we're going to just explain because the, now to Dubai is one of the most uh, important city in the crypto world. Um, and so uh, I hope that the you know, Edelbus can be so um, everybody, everybody, I hope that everybody just pay attention to Edelbus in the future. Um, and also that we're meeting many sort of influential people and many famous people in the crypto industries. And today, that the key speaker was uh, 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 Bitarik Britain's, uh, uh, Bitarik Bitarians. Uh, uh, he's uh, the founder of uh, Ethereum. Um, and also, uh, we just met a lot of some influential guys, like a um, uh, founder of One Inch uh, and, and others. And we're really actually 
um, the meeting with many people and then as we do let them know about our Edibus now. So um, um we're just expanding. Um in September that um we're going to Dubai, Singapore, uh, October, the Malaysia maybe, and also that uh the, the blockchain expo in Tokyo and also November the London. So um um uh, uh Edibus is gonna be just expanding, it's very rapidly uh, from now. And then today, um, um, today means that uh, and then, uh, this uh, podcast that we announced on, on Tuesday, but in the Monday evening, we have a, uh, we have a monthly uh, insiders and hot summer camp. Um, I'm afraid that, that today that in Korea is very heavy rains, that not very hot much, but very humid. Anyway, um, um, please um, don't forget um, Harvest, uh, that uh, the token, um, uh, the token giveaway that um, uh, that we're gonna have a launch part. Um, and please start in the harvest it. And they, oh, this time that only hundred zeni. So hundred zeni, what kind of value it is? And then we, we don't know yet because that we we just assuming our, our our market cap is just only ten million US dollars worth at the first. But if you just look at the look at the uh, land and if they sell and also the sales in the future. Um, 10 million US dollars assumption. So this is only an assumption. And then we don't know the, what kind of size of Zeni, Zeni going to be in the future. So, and the 100 Zeni, it's, it's very trial for everybody to, who hold the land NFT in the Daimyo district now. And then those benefits is coming up it's very soon again because this is the trial that maybe the more Zeni might be uh, dropped to maybe Coban in the futures because we have already Coban here. So don't forget Harvest. And then please just check the uh, check the uh, website and then to go into uh, to, to go into the site of Harvest, please. And also, I think please just um, uh, already um, um, ninety uh, land NFT in the Daimyo district. Uh, the giveaway uh, all the address must be announced and must have been announced. And then uh, please uh, check it out. And then uh, the please just lucky 90 people like, uh, can just uh, get in a free land NFT in the Daimyo district. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, the monthly editor boss, uh, uh, we are really uh, happy to just uh, announce that as a joint very influential ambassador. Um, and then people, uh, must be very delighted because I think yeah he must be very very influential in the world. So um, and then um, we have a, a lot of events from now um, and then the Katana NFT is coming up and also 9th of September that that we're gonna just make an official report of the global marketing and also the global marketing plan and then um, so uh, I hope uh, people uh, just. Uh, just joining the Aerobus and then enjoy the Aerobus. And also, we might just uh, give a uh, give uh, uh, give you a, some kind of idea of the game file. It's a content of the game file. What kind of sort of game that you can enjoy? So, um, and um, please um, uh, uh, keep watching, keep just observing, and also keep participating in our Aerobus. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for listening. And uh, I will hear you next week. Bye.